Hey guys, Stealth here. Welcome to From the Depths. We're going to do a quick tutorial, and this time we're going to be building Azrox, which is a torpedo which has rocket assist. What I've built here is a couple of quick, easy torpedoes. You have a torpedo propeller, fuel tank, proximity fuse, a couple of fins, a regulator to keep it alive longer, explosive warhead, and torpedo sonar. This is basically what I use as a standard torpedo. Now, if I fire these, then you're going to run into one of the first issues with torpedoes or with a missile rack and I don't have any ejectors mounted on these things which means that the torpedoes are just going to fly off the rails basically. You can see that as they're dropping into the water the distance from launch pad is 150 meters. But let's say that you get jumped by a target. You get jumped by something and you want to make sure that your torpedo gets there fast now, if you do it with these types of torpedoes, it's going to take a while. You can see that with one torpedo propeller, the forward speed is only 21 to 22 meters per second. And this is going to take a long time to get to the target. It does have the other side, which is that you have a lot of fuel. So you could throw in yet another torpedo propeller and try to make it thing a bit faster. But there is a different way that I found to doing this. And that's what I call the ASROC, or the Torpedo with Rocket Assist. You start out on the back with a small, short range thruster. Then you add a fuel tank. You're going to be sacrificing one or two parts, that's okay. I'm going to go with the Torpedo Propeller, and then I'm going to go with the Proximity Fuse. You set the short range thruster to have a max duration of, well, anywhere between, let's say, 0.5 and 3. Here's what's going to happen. The short-range thruster is going to fire. It's going to propel the torpedo at maximum speed, but turn it into a missile. Then, once the short-range thruster has fired for 3 seconds, it's going to drop, and it's going to turn itself into a torpedo. But it does mean that you get a whole different range. Watch this. Right now, the torpedo is turning into a torpedo, but at this point it is already at 500 meters out. 600 meters, 700 meters. And this means that you can get your torpedoes on target a lot faster. It does mean that you have less range, so you're going to be trading a bit of range for a bit of thrust or a bit of uh, speed to target. But Unless you're building a really long range torpedo, I usually prefer my torpedoes to have the capacity to hit faster, so to start doing damage sooner, than to be an extremely long range weapon. And of course you can turn into a torpedo into an extremely long range weapon, take off the short range thruster, add another torpedo propeller and make it a bit faster, but I found that this tends to work really really well. Now there is something that you need to be considering. I'm going to hand this thing off to the AI and with the current setting of a thruster of 3 seconds we're going to run into a problem. The problem is that the missile is not really sure if it's going to be able to track because a torpedo sonar only works when you're underwater. So if I spawn in a marauder this is what happens. Where There's the marauder. The torpedo fires and flies right over the target. There's the problem. This rocket assisted torpedo is so effective at trying to get away from the main target or from the main launch vehicle so fast that it completely misses out on the target. So if you want to have a rocket assisted torpedo firing at shorter range targets you're going to have to adjust your own battery. You're going to have to set up this um, thruster to fire, let's say, um, 0 0.5 seconds. Now we're going to reload. The rotor is firing nice broadsides. There we go. Now the ship is, let's say, how far is it away from the launch vehicle? 340 meters. So you need to make sure that your thruster cuts out before that happens, and that's what's happening with this torpedo. It is going to be uh, firing for a half a second. It gets a nice advantage uh, over the standard launch torpedoes, which don't have a rocket assisted thruster. And now I can hit the Marauder. Now you may be saying that I'm not really using the right warhead. Um, 
possibly. This is a lot of wood. You can easily get through the wood with a fragmentation warhead. Doesn't really matter. But this is something that you need to be aware of. The Azrox will work uh, will work if my platform is still here. They'll work rather well against larger range targets. But short range targets are going to still be an issue. So, um, to quickly recap, let's destroy the enemy vehicle and get all of these repair bots to start working on my repair platform. What you want to have is a short range thruster, but you want to have it with a custom setting. If you don't tell it to fire its thruster only for a couple of seconds, then you're going to find that the thing eats all the fuel and your torpedo won't actually do anything. It won't actually be useful in any way, shape or form. Now this is, let's say, the base version of the ASRock that I tend to use. There is a slightly different version, which technically I suppose you shouldn't be calling an ASRock, but more something along the lines of um, a rocket-assisted mine. I think that would be more fair to it. For that, you're going to, again, need a short-range thruster. And you can tell the short-range thruster to fire um, indefinitely. Max range, or max duration 20 seconds, which usually means that it will eat all of its fuel inside 20 seconds. Add a fuel tank. We're going to throw off the torpedo propeller. And in case, or instead of that, I want to have a regulator so it can stay alive for longer. I'm going to add two regulators. Then, I'm going to add a bit of a warhead. I'm going to go with an explosive warhead or two. Then, let's say uh, we're going to go with a radar, an active radar receiver. And finally, a magnet. Where is the magnet? Here it is. This way, you can still use your missiles after they've expended all of their fuel. Because what happens is that this thing is going to fire. It's going to eat through the fuel tank very, very quickly. Then, it ends up landing in the water, where it starts to slow down. And actually, we could throw in a ballast tank to make sure that this thing is going to float. Let's say we have a float depth of about two meters. And I think my platform is hovering too high so that it's exploding again. Anyway, by doing it this way, you can make sure that the torpedo or the mine is going to float. It's going to float for as long as you have regulators. And this means one regulator adds another 180 seconds. So you right now have a uh, mine that's going to be floating for 240 seconds, also known as four minutes. With two regulators you can add that up to a lot more. This thing is going to stay in the water for seven minutes. Now if I fire this, the range won't be fantastic, and that's okay. Oh, my platform's blowing up yet again. Now it starts to slow down. Distance from launch pad, about 800. And crap, I'm out of fuel. But this thing is going to stay in the water for a long time. It's going to just sit here for seven minutes. If something pops up, the magnet will attract it to the target. Otherwise, it'll just sit here like a mini mine. And this is something that you can use against targets. Now, I put a radar receiver or a radar seeker on it to make it uh, a failsafe. This thing is either going to hit the target and do damage, or it's going to turn itself into a mine. If it cannot reach the target, and the target might be heading for you, then by doing it this way, you can still turn it into a sort of passive weapon system. So let's test this out against yet another Marauder. Uh, before I do so, I think we're going to have to lower this thing a bit, because as my fuel has run out, the fortress cannot stay airborne anymore. Uh, fuel storage, we're going to go with a large package. There we go. Okay, turn this thing into AI hands. Spawn in yet another Marauder. It's very, very close, so the, m the mine won't work. And that's okay, because now I'm doing direct damage to it. Had that target been at a greater range, then the mine feature would have popped up. Now, of course, this isn't really a very heavily protected thing, but the point that I was trying to make here is that you can use this thing in multiple varieties. And by doing it in such a way, you can either turn into a uh, rocket-assisted torpedo, 
or an ASRock, or you can turn it into a rocket that's going to turn into a mine afterwards, but you're going to be sacrificing warheads. And of course, as it is from the depths, you can turn this into a weapon system up to your own uh, desires and your own requirements. So, I hope this short tutorial video was helpful. If it was, please hit the like button so I know that you want to see more. If you have any questions for a specific video, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to help out. And otherwise, just have fun experimenting in from the depths. This, for me, is the best part. Being able to design weapon systems like this is something that I've never been able to do in other games. And that's something that I hope you're enjoying alongside with me. So thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for more From the Depths videos.